Hi everybody, my name is Steve Chittenden, working for SAP Australia and New Zealand. Uh, welcome to my next session, which is all around S4HANA, what is it, how does it work? And this time we're going to keep in the idea of inventory, but really go into the next area of sales and distribution. How do we actually create a sales order? What does it look like in the system? How do we track it? And how do we use sales orders in S4? Okay, before we get into that, let me just quickly flick through a few slides here. Um, as before, what is S4? What's it all about? It's all about bringing together our HANA platform, which is our in-memory database, giving us new applications and extensions in that database and platform system for our core and obviously the user experience in Fiori, Fiori being our next generation uh, system to allow us to use better applications and user experience. What it's all about, again, is bringing together that, that simplified data model. This is the, the prior data model. Um, and if we look at where that really came from and the, uh, the, the when it was designed, uh, we have to remember that back in the, in the days of uh, limited memory and bringing the aggregates, all those parts of the system we've developed over the years, we can very much simplify that and take those tables down from many, many tables down to a simplified version of the tables, not mixing master data and transactional data, actually separating them, putting them into much more simple tables or simpler tables for us. Now let's think about that back in when this was actually invented at SAP back in the 70s and 80s. When we started building the system, this is what hard disks look like. So uh, here we can see a 250 megabyte hard disk, which in the 80s was a, a big deal. And as you can see, it's rather large, about the size of a refrigerator, or a large refrigerator that is, and probably cost more than the building it was sitting in to actually uh, to, to buy from IBM. Uh, next to that, we have the first gigabyte hard disk ever. And again, very, very large. The computers it was running looked like this, and obviously our modern day computers look very different, um, as do our pop stars, which are far, um, have far less hair than they seem to have in the, in the 70s and 80s. Anyway, I digress. So what's different now? Obviously, we have much more availability to data in memory. We can go out and actually simply buy for a few dollars uh, a, a many megabyte um, disk, which we can just put into any computer. I'm just using that as a, a, to show you where the data has come from and uh, how far we've we've travelled. And obviously, the devices that we're using now are very different to uh, to back in the 80s and 90s. Obviously, a lot more um, mobile devices pads and things like that. So just to emphasize again where we've been, why we needed to redesign the data structure and to bring that data structure into a modern, simplified version so we can use it better. So what does that look like in terms of the principle of one? Bringing together one method of doing it, increasing the throughput of the system and of course the usability of the system as well. Now, as I mentioned, obviously we use a lot more uh, devices. So what SAP is doing is trying to bring everything together onto a mobile type platform. Obviously the detail is still there if you want to use a, a computer or PC uh, as well. So let's take a look at what that looks like from a sales and distribution point of view. Let me just pop into my system here for a second. Okay, so I've logged into my Fury front end and I could be a sales guy, I could be someone working with sales orders. And what I can see straight away is because the HANA system is running in the background, giving me real time information, what we can see straight away is I've got some shipping issues, some credit issues, so on and so forth. If I want to perform some transactions, I've got my transactional tiles here, which I can use to create sales orders, look at different things. I may want to look at my contacts. Uh, so if I'm out in field sales, I may need to look at what's the phone number for these people. Oh, that's it there. Um, if I wanted to edit that, I can simply click on edit down at the bottom. As you can see here, I can change that particular contact. So let's just uh, go back to an actual transaction side of things. 
rather than me having to run reports in the system like VA05 and things like that uh, in the old GUI, what we can do now is we can see straight away uh, where our issues lie. And if I want to drill down into them, I can simply click on the tile. And this is what I've got uh, filtered just to a couple of customers here. And we can see I've got my total process from all my issues to issues that happen to be with the sales order, such as pricing or maybe plant determination ones that are in supply, so if they've triggered a purchase order for the supply of the goods, <coughs> excuse me, ones that are in delivery, and any that have uh, issues with, with the invoice at the moment. And we can also see the list here. Uh, I've got eight issues with a couple of different customers. I've got the sales order here. I could, if I wanted to, simply click on this and it will take me into the details of that particular uh, issue and what's actually wrong with it at the moment. And what the system will then do is it analyze the sales order, tell me what's wrong with it, and suggest a way of actually fixing that. So what we can start to see shortly, thank you, is the system now showing me, it's uh, very old, this one, obviously, with the, the days overdue here, but it's telling me that it's gone into the warehouse and it hasn't been picked. So we can see, obviously, straight away, there's an issue with picking here, and I could then call the warehouse and see what's happening. My only option really here is to actually goods issue this, but if it hasn't been picked in the warehouse, obviously I don't want to try and attempt that. But I can contact any uh, any particular contacts that happen to be there. And if anyone had placed any notes around this, such as uh, why hasn't this been picked, those types of things, we can see that in here as well. So maybe I've rung the customer, and the customer said, no, no, that's supposed to be on hold. So I'm going to add a note here. save that that's great add that in there all good so now I've got a note against that particular sales order I know what's happening with it let's just go back and take a look at another one here for a second let's say I want to take a look at this this particular order and it's sitting in the order status so it hasn't passed the delivery yet let me click on the sales order itself and we got a few options here I could see the issue details, which is the same as what I just did in clicking into it. I can go into a process flow. Yep, that's fine. Or I can look at a fact sheet. A fact sheet is a way of looking at all data, such as master data, um, any other sales orders, or any of previous documents that are related to this, all in one place. So if I had quotations, contracts, delivery documents, billing documents, it would list them all here alongside with the items that are purchased. And of course, I can drill into those if I want to. And obviously, the master data around that particular customer. In this case, though, I'm going to do something slightly different. A lot of times I get questions about where is the detail? Where is the detail of the system for this particular sales order? What I'm going to do here is I'm going to click in Change Sales Order. And what I'm going to do is actually then go into that detailed view. Now, you'll see here, I haven't left Fury. I'm still in the uh, in the same system, same screen. All I've done is I've clicked in, show me the detail, and here we can see everything in there, just like a normal standard GUI sales order. All the details in here, I could take a look at it, I can drill down, all those bits and pieces. So I just wanted to quickly show, you know, if we needed to fix an issue, like maybe update the plant number or update the delivery date and things like that, I could have done it in there. Alternatively, if I want to go to a change sales order in a few review, in an app view, a simplified way of looking at it, I can also do that in here as well. So I can actually see uh, where things are. I can click into the, the line item details, so on and so forth. So different ways of navigating, depending on if you like to use the, the more detailed version or the standard version. So there we've been looking at a sales order with some of the issues it had and how do we uh, go into the detail of that sales order to change it. And of course, just to reiterate, I started from a single tile and that tile could then show me all the issues I had throughout the entire supply chain of this particular sales order from the creation all the way through to its invoicing. So how do we create a sales order? Now I've shown you how we can look at sales orders and how we can uh, fix ones that happen to have issues. Let me go down to my create sales order button click on this little tile here and here i have my create sales order app ready to go 
Now, because it's intuitive, what it's done is it's actually looked at the last customer I particularly uh, used and placed a sales order for, and it's listed all the sales orders for that particular customer here for me. If I wanted to, I could actually click on this little button and select a different customer. I only have three in this particular case. I click on OK, and it's saying, are you sure you want to change that? I say, yes, I do. And it says, oh, you've only got one sales order for that particular customer. And if I wanted to, I could actually copy that that sales order by clicking Add to Cart and then creating a new sales order based on that. Alternately, I could also look at the products that are relevant for this customer. So by clicking on Products rather than Orders, I can see the products that this particular customer has ordered in the past. If I want to do a search for products, so it may be something they haven't uh, ordered before. Let me make that a little shorter so it searches a bit harder. We can see here all the different products that I can have and I could add that um, simply by clicking, clicking on it, click on add to cart and then I'm starting to create a sales order. Let me uh, just pop back to my other customer for a moment. So I'm happy to change customers and I'll get rid of my search because I don't want that particularly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sales order for a, a 14 inch Sony um, flat screen TV here for my Becker Berlin customer. So I've already got the product selected, so that's fine. There's no problem there. I could see the product details if I wish here. And if we had an image, it would obviously appear at the top. So I'm going to click add to cart. And all that happens is it tells me, okay, you've now added a item to this customer. I click on the shopping cart to check what's in my shopping cart. And it's requested quantities one, delivery date is here. That's fine, happy with all that. I could of course change the requested delivery date. Let's check out, <coughs> excuse me. When I go to checkout, I can change some different options such as again, the delivery date. I can see the pricing now, all those things. And if I wanted to, I could change and update this. Let's review the shipping which takes me to the next stage. Is there a purchase order in here? I'm going to put in some uh, random text there. Any shipping instructions? A note to receiver. Could I please check X, Y, Z, whatever it happens to be in there. I can finally review the order, which means now, okay, moving to the next stage. Here's my order. I can see my shipping instructions, my purchase order number, so on and so forth. I click on place order and what the system will do is give me a sales order. So this is 29818. That's brilliant. Okay, great. I've now got a new sales order. So if I click on orders here, we should be able to see that in the system. 29818 is there. All good. You can see the price. So I could go into the change and check the process and the tracking as we did earlier. Now I just want to finish off by actually going back a step and going back into our old um, user interface. Again, a lot of people have asked me during these sessions with S4, what actually happens to the data when I create something in Fiori? Well, try not to think of it as a portal, but more of the actual system itself. And just to prove that, if I'm going to log into the, the, uh, the GUI version of this, I go into an old transaction, and I just need to change it to the purchase uh, sorry, sales order number I created. We can see it's all there. It's all created in the back end uh, system as well. Uh, we've got the purchase order number here, what I've ordered, requested delivery date. Everything's there. It's just that I created it via Fury as opposed to using the normal or prior user interface. Now, just to explain the difference, if I was to try and use this in the old user interface, of course, I would have had to have entered its sales order distribution area, all those types of uh, bits of information. But because I'm using Fury, I don't need to do that. It's a much easier, simple way of doing it. I simply select the products I want, add them to the cart, off into the process of actually tracking the sales order. So that was a very quick run through of a little bit of sales and distribution. Obviously, again, I can use my front end to see what's happening, any issues I have any credit issues, how much profit is on hold because we're not shipping them through. And if I want to create a transaction, I can simply use my tiles to do that. So simply to summarize, what we're doing is we're using S4 to look at a new way of doing things for the Fury Launchpad. 
As always, if you want more information, you can go into uh, our simplification list and SAP. Uh, dot, sorry, help.sap.com uh, forward slash S4HANA. Uh, please go in there, have a look. There are some simplifications of how we're doing things a little different, a little simpler. Um, thanks very much for your time.